Welcome to Fitzy's Fabulous Scrapbooks. I'm Michelle Fitzgerald, aka Fitzy, and I'm an independent advisor for Creative Memory Scrapbooks, and I'm here to help you make your scrapbooks fabulous. And today it is another plus sign design sketch time. It's the first week of November or first Sunday of November. And can I tell you up here in Massachusetts, it's in the 70s today. It's crazy. It's beautiful weather, but I will take it because eventually it's going to get really cold. <laughs> All right. So let me just get down to my workspace right away. And let's see if we can get this going here. One sec, here we go. All right. Um, so we are gonna use another sketch from our tried and true 110 scrapbooking ideas and sketches book. And um, this sketch that I'm working on today is on page 57 in this book. All right. So I'm just gonna hold this up to the camera just so you can get a better view. So when I'm looking at this, to me, this looks a little busy. And I think when you look at that, even though it's a one page layout, it can be a little overwhelming. So I try to keep it kind of simple. Just, I don't know, you'll see what I mean. So what I did here, um, they did a lot of embellishing and whatnot in the middle but I feel like this is so bright and vibrant. I don't want to do too much decoration on the inside where the photos are, because I do want the photos to be the highlight of this page. So, and I didn't attach my decorative elements yet because I wanted to show you a couple of different things. So the mats on this one are four and a quarter inch mats uh they're squares okay so the photo the white space is a four inch square so i just wanted to give you that general knowledge there okay so i'm gonna take all of this off just so you can see what this looks like without anything else on it and i think when you break it down into little pieces like this it's a little easier to understand. Um, that's kind of how I operate anyway. Oop, okay, so I just had used repositionable on these to put them down and I can just very easily lift them up, which is nice. But now do you see all of this awesome space for photos here, right? but yet you have this beautiful decorative element on each side. So I feel like because of all the decorative vibrant patterns and whatnot here, I don't really need to do a whole lot of decorative work on this part of the layout, all right? Now, what's nice about this sketch is it looks great like this, but if you wanted to, you could simply turn it and to make a two page spread, I would just carry this through. And wouldn't that be beautiful, right? Um, so I'm gonna show you just how to do the one page for today. And then if you wanna do two pages, you can, because you'll know the method that was used. Uh, and it's a pretty simple method, similar to what we did a couple of weeks ago with the sketch from the virtual crop. All right, so let me just move these out of the way. And another thing, I used four and a quarter inch square matting, but you know, you could definitely put four by six photos. Now, these aren't the best photos, but they're the only ones I have from this little trip we took when my kids were little. Um, we went up to Maine. And we spent the day, I believe it was at Scarborough Beach. So let me just see here. But I just want to show you some of the different things you could do with this. 
Um, I could do some vertical photos like so, right? And that would look really sweet, okay? If I wanna turn it this way, then I could also do maybe one vertical and two horizontals like so, all right? So this is what I like about this layout. It's very versatile. So there's a lot of different things you can do. And this part here, the decorative part, you're gonna see it's really not that hard to create. All right, so that's gonna be my job today is to show you how easy that is to make. So let me just get these photos put to the side. Okay. Now, for this layout, I used Serene Waters. Um, and I just wanna show you. Now, on this, um, well, you know what? I'll get to that in a sec. Let me show you the measurements first because we'll create with our plus sign design. And oops, I'm gonna take this one off. All right, so if you haven't seen me do a plus sign design sketch, it's pretty simple. I use my zero centering ruler. Let me see if I can, uh, do I have a piece of, there we go. All right, and the nice thing about the zero centering ruler is Everything starts in the middle at zero and works its way out on either side. So it helps you find the central point of whatever it is you're working on. Um, and it's coming in handy for these plus sign design sketches because now I can go and look and I'm gonna make a little line at the top at the zero mark. And then I'm going to come over to the side. And now when we're doing the plus sign design, you don't have to be fully accurate. Um, you know, it's basically just to get us in the ballpark of what the measurements might be. And then we're just going to go ahead and draw our two lines. So there's one. And there's the second one. All right, so let me hold that up because I think my pencil is pretty light here. But see how I have my line going vertically down here and then a horizontal one here, hence the name plus sign. <laughs> We're making a plus sign. So what I want you to remember, and I say this when I do these, um, but sometimes there are new people who are watching, so I'm sorry if it's a little repetitive, but the idea is this is a 12 by 12 page layout. So once I make that plus sign, I have now divided the page into four quadrants, each quadrant being a six inch square. And that makes it easier when we break it down into smaller pieces to figure out what some of the sizes on everything on this page would be. So the first thing that strikes me are these two borders. And the borders really aren't taking up a whole lot of space in their squares. So I decided that they're gonna be about an inch and a half wide. All right. And so if this one's an inch and a half wide and this one's an inch and a half wide, that's three inches, which means the middle piece here is going to be nine inches because it is a 12 by 12 page. All right. And then I have to decide what I want to do for strips. Now, this is what I'm going to show you. Originally, I had decided that I, I was going to go with one and a half inch width on my strips. Now, this is what it looks like with one and a half inches. There's nothing wrong with it, but for some reason, I didn't feel like it gave me as much as I wanted from it in terms of color. And so I'm gonna just bring the layout back. 
what I ended up doing is making these one and a quarter inch strips. And it just allowed me a little more space on the border to get a little more color in. Okay, so I was able to bring in a little more pattern. Um, would this look fine? Absolutely, it would. It's all personal preference. So there's no right or wrong. And another thing I'm going to add, you can do whatever size strips you want. I chose to do one and a quarter inch strips. You may choose to do one inch strips or half inch, and that's fine. Or you may choose to do a combination of different measurements. Maybe you'll do one inch with half inch with an inch and a quarter. And I think that would look great too. It might give you a little more variation and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, for my intents and purposes today, I was just gonna keep it simple. So I went for an inch and a quarter and I'm very pleased with how it came out. All right, but I just want you to know, here's the difference. As you can see, I was able to get a few more colors in there than I did on this one, okay? And then I also didn't have to deal with the little tip of the drum. That is a teeny weeny little piece of paper that, and it was, let me tell you, it was challenging to get it to stay because it was so small. So with this, I didn't have that issue. So it's fine, okay? And honestly, I could have started the strip a little further in and I wouldn't have had that issue either. Um, but again, it's all what you want to do. So. For right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some scraps that I have from the Showtime collection. And I do highly encourage you to use your scraps on this kind of a page. Um, this is a great opportunity to use up some of the scraps that you create when you're making other layouts. All right. So I hope that this all makes sense in terms of the plus sign design and the measurements. Because in my opinion, when you're working with sketches, when you know what size the page is and you can figure out the measurements or at least an idea. And again, this is my take on it. Somebody else might do this and have different measurements. And that doesn't mean anybody's wrong. It just means that they had a different take on it. It's your scrapbook, so you got to do what makes you happy. <laughs> um, and I'm all for it. So this is just my take. This is me showing you what I'm doing. And you are free to, you know, copy away, scrap lift, whatever you want to call it. Or you're free to do your own thing. It's fine. All right. So I'm going to put this to the side. And so I already made one and a half inch strips from just that free cardstock that you get with all of your paper packs. And I took a bunch of strips that I had from Showtime and I made them into one and a quarter inch strips. So now I'm gonna take my repositionable tape runner and I'm gonna take one of my one and a half inch strips and I'm gonna take my tape runner and just go down that whole strip. This makes it so quick and easy. Now, I'm sure one of the questions is, aren't you gonna use more adhesive when you do that? And the short answer is probably yes, but it's gonna make my life easier, so it doesn't really bother me. <laughs> um, so you can do it however you want, but, I'm going to do what I think makes it easier in the long run. Now, and I think I might have said this when I did a similar one a couple of weeks ago. When you're putting your strips on, you want to make sure that none of the corners are showing on the piece that you're trying to cover. And you want to make sure that it hangs the piece that you're putting on hangs over both edges. If it doesn't hang over, you're gonna have little white spots in your border and you're not gonna like that. All right, so I'm just gonna continue to do this going down and I'm just putting them right up against each other. I'm not overlapping, but they're just gonna go right next to each other, one after the other, keeping it pretty simple.
All right. And I did a few things ahead of time, just so it wouldn't take too much time. But you can see how this is going to look. And I even had some shorter strips that I wanted to use. And I want to get some of that gold feather in here. So you'll see it's it's not a time consuming layout. I think it looks more time consuming than it actually is. All right. Oops. All right. Now I'm going to go back with my scissors and just cut some pieces off so I can use more of it. And I think the Showtime paper is so, so pretty. And I have to be honest, these aren't colors I would typically go for, but I really love them. <laughs> All right, so here is order number one. So I'm just gonna cut these little edges off again. All right, and I'm gonna reserve all of this for border number two. And I'm gonna bring my trimmer out. Now, the easiest thing to do here is to cut your two little ends, the smallest ends. So put one right up on the cut line and don't forget to use your little guides to make sure you're cutting exactly at the edge without cutting into the border. And I've got it. And those little guides are so helpful. And as we're cutting, we're going to get little pieces that look like this. I'm giving you permission to throw it away and not put it in your stash. You're not going to use these little pieces ever again. And it's just going to create clutter. And I clutter drives me crazy. <laughs> All right. So the key here is to make sure you flip this upside down so you can see what you're actually cutting. All right. And again, just use the little guide to make sure that you are cutting exactly where you want to cut. And now that the ends are cut, we can go for the sides. So again, I'm going to line it up at the cut line. And the tricky part with this is make sure you look top to bottom on this, because you might be lined up at the top, but then getting a little crooked it as you get down to the bottom. And I found that I was doing that. <laughs> so I had to correct myself a little bit. All right, so that looks good. All right. And again, all of this is scraps, just get rid of it. You're never going to use it. Don't hold on to that. <laughs> it's just going to weigh you down. <laughs> All right. So let's see. But see how quick and easy this is now because we know the measurements. And I'll tell you, sometimes when I see a sketch that looks that busy, I'm more prone to skip over it and not use it because it looks so busy. But now with the whole plus sign design, I, I feel like I can figure out just about any sketch that comes my way. All right, so let's see how it looks. <gasps> Isn't it pretty? <laughs> I love it. All right, so I'm going to quickly do the second one. All 
Oh, I'm going to take it off of here. So I don't feel cohesive. Oops. I got my other one ready and loaded. <laughs> I've learned that lesson too many times. All right. So that looks good. And now we are going to use more of our scraps. And I'm just being careful to make sure that I have everything hanging over the edge just a little bit. Oops. Right. Oh, and my doorbell ring. Okay, so now I'm gonna just cut a few extra pieces off. Okay. And then I'm gonna continue on. Oops, so let's get another. here and we'll do another piece here oh, and we'll do another one here you know what I think I'm gonna do this and this all right so now I'm just gonna cut this off And we are almost done. Now we'll do our trimming again. And I'll show you how it all ends up. All right. So we're going to flip it over again to the back side. And we're just going to cut off that little bit. Great. So it's a really simple technique. Um, and it's a great way to use up scraps, which I love doing. All right. So all of those little pieces are going to be scraps. All right, and that looks good. Let's watch at the bottom here. Yep, it looks good too. All right, so again, that's all scraps. You don't need to keep those. And One more. Oh. All right, so here we have it. Let's see what order number two looks like. Aren't these pretty? <laughs> All right, so let's get our base paper and then we are done. This is a simple one. Now I was curious to see how it would look with this. And this might be a little busy, we'll see. Um, oh, but I think I like that. And then I think what I would do is matte with black, right? So here, let me just put that on. 
I love this collection. It's so great for a celebration or if you have anybody who's into uh, music or theater. Um, I taught theater for a number of years at my kids' grammar school. So I have lots of pictures that this collection will work well with. All right. And, and then I want to point out, see what I did here. And I'll do it on this one too. Do you see how I just put these little strips to just kind of frame everything that's going to be in the middle here? So I'm going to take some, now on the Serene Waters, I used the Deep Sea Green, but I think on this one, I'm just going to use black. And I think the black will really bring it out. So what I do is just make an eighth of an inch strip which if you put your card stock or your paper to the second cutting line, that will give you an eighth of an inch. So I usually start my cut down the bottom to make sure that I am cutting straight. All right, so I'm just gonna do one. And then one more. So now I have my two eighth of an inch strips. And, and you know what else could have looked good with this too? A gold, a gold color would have looked really cool down here too. But see how it's just going to kind of tie it all together? I love it. So now these strips are so teeny tiny. What I do to get the adhesive on is I just put them right next to each other. And then I hold them together and I start in the middle with my tape runner and I just go down one end and then I come back and go down the other. And now they both have tape runner on. And I don't know if you can hear my dog in the background, but she's saying, hello, that's my little boo boo bear. She is a 10 and a half pound Shih Tzu who is also 10 years old now. And she's my forever toddler and she's adorable. All right. So there's one. So this is a layout that you can just have a lot of fun with, use up your scraps. Uh, and it's fun to create, like it's very relaxing. It's nothing too crazy to figure out. <laughs> I like easy. All right. And there it is. All right. And then if I took my photos and let me just, I'll make a couple of quick little mats just so you can see. What did I do with that? Here we go. Just so you can see the little book. Let's do four and a quarter. And we'll do another four and a quarter. So I think when you see the mats, it just really ties it all together nicely. Right. So four and a quarter. I hope you guys are having fun watching this and I hope that you'll try and create this on your own. See how nice the black looks on this. I love it. What a cool little layout, right? And again, don't forget, if you want to, just turn it, right? And now your photos can go the opposite way. So there's a lot you can do with this layout. <laughs> All right. So that is it 
for today's sketch uh, plus sign design sketch. Let me just come back up to me. Hold on one second. Ah, there I am. <laughs> All right. So I hope you enjoyed that. And at nine o'clock tonight, I am going to put out the video of the contest winners. So tune back in at nine o'clock. See if you're a winner. There's going to be five. Very exciting. Um, and I'll explain all the details of what you win and how it all works on that video. Okay. So for now, I just want to say thank you once again for joining me. I hope you enjoyed what we did today. And if you have not yet subscribed, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Um, and also feel free to join our Facebook group. We have um, a really fun group called FRQ Glitz Girls Scrapbooking Group. And it's run by myself and two team members. And we do a lot of stuff over there. So feel free to jump on board. All you have to do is answer a few simple questions and we approve you and let you right in. All right. Um, thanks so much for watching. And remember, we just turned our clocks back. So now we're on stand Eastern Standard Time, no longer Daylight Savings Time. So I'm here every Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> I got to get used to that again. Um, so please join me uh, whenever you can on Sundays. There's a nice group um, that we all say hello while the video's playing. <laughs> and people tell me where they're from, and it's really exciting. I got somebody from New Zealand and from Australia and Canada and lots of people from the US, and they tell me what areas they're from, and I love that. Um, so please feel free. And I love your comments. I do read them all. So please feel free. Let me hear your comments. I love the feedback and give me suggestions for what you'd like to see me do here on this channel. All right. So thanks once again for joining me. I hope to see you next time and bye for now.